Today's six-minute sermon is all about the power of God's grace. So let's get to work. God's grace is powerful. Do you ever stop to think about it in those terms? You know, we think about God's grace and we sing that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. But do we think about what God's grace is able to do for us? In Titus chapter 2, verse 11, it says that God's grace has appeared. It's a word that means God's grace has been put on display. And we know it was put on display through Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross for us. And so when we truly grasp the grace of God, it has the power to make a major impact in our lives. And so let's notice a few different things that God's word has the power to do in our lives. First of all, God's word has the power to save me. In Titus 2 verse 11, the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation for all people. Salvation from what? Well, salvation from my sin and the effects that sin has on my life. Both here in this life and in the eternal life to come, sin creates destruction. But yet God's grace can save me from that. Over in Titus chapter 3, I think we get a fuller understanding of this salvation and how God's grace has the power to save me. In verse 3, it says, We ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, we were led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our day in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But, it says, when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of, gen of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Just look at the good things that God, God's grace brings us when we're saved. It brings us renewal and regeneration. It brings us the Holy Spirit. It brings us justification. It brings us eternal life. But I want you to notice, God's grace saves me not because of who I am, but because of who God is. It's because of God's loving kindness, because of God's goodness and God's mercy that I can be saved. That's why in Titus 2.11, it says God's grace brings salvation for all people. It doesn't matter if, if back then you were Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female. It doesn't matter today if you're black or white, rich, poor, religious, non-religious. God's grace can save you. It's available for all people because it's based on who God is, not who we are. But notice also, it's based on what God has done, not what I have done. You see, it says we are saved not because of works we did in our own righteousness, but because of what God did through Jesus Christ. So here's the truth. No one is so sinful that they cannot be saved by God's grace. And at the same time, no one is so righteous that they do not need to be saved by God's grace. God's grace has the power to save me. But number two, God's grace has the power to train me. Titus 2 verse 12 says um, that God's gr grace is training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. That word train, it means to both instruct and to discipline. Training takes knowledge, we have to learn things, but also training takes hard work. And we shouldn't think the grace of God means that we have no part to play. We're not saved by our own good works, that much is true. But yet, God's grace trains us to be godly. It trains us to deny what is wrong, to renounce it, to put it away. And yet, at the same time, it trains us to do what is right, to become more godly and upright in this life. Number three, God's grace has the power to bless me, specifically to bless me with a future hope. It says that we are waiting for the blessed hope, the appearing and glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I talked in a recent sermon about how we need to be ready to meet Jesus. 
But the, the beautiful thing is, because of God's grace, we can be ready. And that day when Christ returns is a, going to be a day of great hope for those who have been saved by his amazing grace. And then lastly, God's grace has the power to redeem me. It says in verse 14, he gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. It has the power to redeem me. That word means I've been ransomed. I've been bought with a price and the price was Jesus. He gave himself. He redeems me from lawlessness. I'm no longer viewed in God's sight as a lawbreaker, as someone who's guilty, but rather I've been purified. It redeems me from uncleanness. And it says we've been purified to be a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. It redeems me from purposelessness. I no longer am wandering around aimlessly thinking, what do I do? Rather, it says, I'm zealous. I'm eager for good works to serve my God. God's grace has the power to redeem me. And so I would encourage you, no matter who you are, to receive God's powerful grace. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. God bless.